And I would like to thank everyone for joining our talk on discussing how CRISPR, especially Cas9 nuclease, can be called since a single guide RNA and a single strand DNA DNA HDR templates can be used together to generate cell therapeutics via non-viral protocol, which can be further developed into an alternative solution to produce allogenic cell therapeutics in a more secure and economic way. Hemoric antigen receptor T cells are a promising treatment for certain types of cancers. And since 2017, there have been four CAR T therapeutics approved by FDA. Meanwhile, cell therapeutics are still constantly evolving and improving and providing new options for cancer patients. Cell therapies are currently being evaluated in a variety of cancer types in clinical trials, all thanks to the continuous development of gene editing tools. There are several types of tools available for gene editing, and their invention all started in the realization that the introduction of double strand DNA break at the target site may result in a several magnitude increase of frequency of target gene integration. However, the meganuclease uh, approach was restricted by the lack of flexibility and the recognition site. Later on, there are also zinc finger nuclease and the transcription activator like effector nuclease talon successfully increased the genome editing efficiency. However, targeting different sites in the genome require redesign and the re-engineering of a new set of proteins. The difficulty in cloning and the protein engineering of zinc finger nuclease and talon partially prevent these tools from being broadly adopted by scientific communities. In this respect, CRISPR has indeed accelerated the field because it's very robust and much simpler and more flexible to use. Because the Cas9 protein is, uh, is stable and whenever we need to change a new target, we just need to redesign a 20 base pair guide RNA sequence and send it to chemical synthesis. And it's very easy and uh, simple to use. Therefore, CRISPR tools have, have been widely used in different uh, research fields from basic genetic research to gene therapy, cell therapy, which we'll talk a little bit more later in the talk, and also to cell line engineering and animal model generation, agriculture, type screening and epigenetic research, and also, uh, which were also very important in 2020 with the outbreak of COVID-19, uh, fast and portable detect tools by, based by, on CRISPR also showed a great power to prevent the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. Also because of the wide use of this uh, CRISPR tool, the inventor, Emmanuel Chapentier and Jennifer Dotna received a Nobel Prize in Chemistry last year. Also, um, CRISPR has been used to generate cell therapeutics for uh, clinical use and nowadays. This table from the 2020 article entitled Gene Editing Pipeline Takes Off in Nature Review. This is 12 allogenic therapeutics that are in or approaching the clinical trial. There's one engineered by micronuclease, which we mentioned before, five by Talon, and six already by CRISPR-Cas system. Notably, the number four candidates. Its performance in phase one clinical trial was already published in last February and proved the safety of CRISPR engineered T cell therapies. However, when we look at the process of this uh, NYSO T cell T engineering, for generation of, uh, of this cell therapy, CRISPR was only applied to now called the endogenous TCR gene and the PD1 component. The delivery of the payload NYSO was still done by lantivirus. Conventionally, we can also generate allogenic CAR T or TCR T cell by deliver an expression cassette of the payload first by viral methods and then use the CRISPR to knock out certain endogenous targets which may cause life threatening graft versus host disease, like the gene encoding TCR and other targets like SD52 or B2M to enhance the persistence. But actually, 
by CRISPR class system, the functional knockout of endogenous TCR and the site specific knockout of in the site specific knocking of payload can be achieved by one step and in a non viral methods. When designing the CRSRP production process, one important factor that need to consider is the availability of critical studying materials. Lantiviral gene transfer is the current golden standard for clinical manufacture of CAR T cells. High expression levels after random transgene integration are achieved by use of strong viral promoters. However, the excessive CAR expression may also lead to the activation induced cell death or exhaustion. On the other hand, for non-viral methods, it has also its advantages on precess gene editing and the entire production process is animal free and the much lower cost and the faster turnaround time because the entire process is simple and uh, there's no involvement of bacteria cell or mammalian cells. During the past two years, it still has its limitations due to the uh, relatively lower editing efficiency and also with limited vendor of GMP production. Um, but now it's become a more promising and uh, more popular in the field. To do the re replace the indigenous TCR with antigen specific TCR and CAR, first we need to design a special guide RNA to create double strand DNA break at the first axon of TCR alpha constant and then integrate the design constant at the double strand break via homology direct repairing. In this way, TCR or CAR expression cassette can be placed under the control of indigenous transcription regulation, leading to a sustainable T cell function and delayed cell exhaustion. On the left side of this slide is a detailed design of how to uh, insert a NYESO TCR to the indigenous TCR to generate TCRT. But on the right side of the slides is a design how to replace indigenous TCR by well-designed anti-SYN-19 car. To do the uh, T-cell engineering via non-viral protocol, we need a few key components. First of all is the guide RNA, and it needs to be mixed together with Cas9 protein to form uh, the active form of RNP. And we also need the HDR template to introduce the CAR or TCR constructs. Also, we need the isolated and activated T cell. When the, all the materials are ready, we mix them together and put on the electroporation platform and then do the cell expansion and recovery and to screening the pos positive population. To achieve high uh, editing efficiency, the choice of RMP materials is very important. Let's go back to the um, case of PD-1 knockout. Here are three different uh, published data. And the first one is was a clinical trial done a few years ago by a Chinese group. They delivered the cas guard RNA via plasmid templates. The expression of cas protein and guard RNA were all done by in vivo transcription and the average knockout of PDY is only about 10%. And back to the case that we mentioned before, that report in 2020 uh, for the knockout of uh, PDL1, PD1 here, um, the guide RNA is actually produced by in vitro transcription. And uh, the knockout efficiency of PD1, PD1 is uh, averagely uh, in 20%. On the right side is the recent case published in the end of last year. It's actually also a Chinese therapeutic uh, company. They developed a, a new uh, cell therapy uh, by deactivating the indigenous PD-1, meanwhile knocking a anti-SYNC-19 car at the PD-1 locus. In that study, the researchers used a highly purified single-guide RNA, which is chemically synthesized, and uh, it's actually purchased from GeneScript. The knockout efficiency of PD-1 is about 90%. The other important thing is to ensure the um, material for, 
for uh, knocking templates. We did some in-house tests to verify which is the best form for knocking templates done on Hacktoon S3T cell line. We choose a few different types of uh, payloads as represents like plasma DNA and mean circle to represent circular DNA payloads and uh, PCR, purified PCR amplicon to represent the uh, blunt and linear double strand DNA and also a single strand DNA. Two days after the operation, we found both plasma DNA and the PCR amplicon has much quite high um, GF positive rates, but we also found a very high background with a non-RMP control group, which means this is actually transit expression of the constructs. When we look at the SSDNA group, the um, GF positive rate is pretty low, but there's also barely any uh, background in the non-RMP control group. When we wait till seven days after electro operation, we found out the, at the uh, circular DNA payloads group, the RMP positive samples has much, much dramatically decreased GFP positive and almost equal to a non-RMP uh, control group, which means there's no uh, knocking ha events happened. When we look at the PCR DSDNA uh, group, the GFP positive rate maintains about, at about 20% and is much higher to the control group, which indicates there, there's actually uh, integration happened. For single strand DNA, the positive population doesn't change. And also in the RMP uh, control, non-RMP control group is still with very low backgrounds. So the conclusion here is linear DNA payloads templates have better performance than circular DNA templates for HDR. And at the same dosage, like two microgram, single strand DNA has lower knocking efficiency but also lower false positive signals. In the end of 2019, there's also a research group published uh, work on by using long ray sequencing to evaluate different type of payloads like what we did. There are uh, PCR donors, which is linear, blunt, and uh, double strand DNA. Also single strand DNA donors and plasma donors. By long, by long ray sequencing, they found that um, by fact evaluation, they found that um, like what we uh, just reported before, that PCR donor gives the highest GFP positive rate with like about 50%, while sing, single strand DNA donor gives 20% 20, 20 um, GFP positive rate, and plasma DNA gives the lowest GFP positive rate. When look inside the the constructs by long ray sequencing, they found out um, besides the perfect HDR insertion, there are also a high ratio of duplicate uh, NHEJ ligation happened when using blunt and PCR products. And also integration of uh, concatenate donors happens in the when using PCR amplicon as, as HDR repair templates. Well, for single strand DNA donor, there's a um, much higher ratio of perfect HDR, and there's any other, barely any other type of uh, random integrations. Well, however, there, there can be or might be low ratio of truncated integration donor due to maybe the single strand DNA is not stable within the cell. And the case for plasma DNA donor is the worst. Uh, it's had much lower uh, ratio of perfect HDR, but also have other risks of um, with the integration of extended plasma backbone. And here we also have some in-house testing on uh, DSDNA we purified from a PCR amplicon compared to single strand DNA donor um, on a um, T primary T cell from acute ALL patients on, on this data, we found that um, double strand DNA will cause severe uh, cell death, uh, death due to toxicity via a dose manner, dose increased manner. Well, for single strand DNA, it, it can, with the increase of the dosage, the survivability maintained at a all very high level. And most importantly, when we look at the effects data, and the four micro 
gram in dosage, there is no positive uh, population anymore because most of the cells died due to toxicity of double strand DNA. However, for single strand DNA, the knocking efficiency increased linearly with the dosage of SIDNA input. Also, by the very beginning of 2021, there's also another a research, German research group reported the toxicity of double strand DNA is actually uh, dependent on the dosage of transfected double strand DNA. It can trigger multiple autoimmune response, which may lead to cell death or apoptosis. In this research, the authors also combine the DNA sensor inhibitor and also with HDI enhancer, which can um, give a very nice protocol for the cell preparation and uh, cell treatment electroporation program. In the end, by combining DNA sensor inhibitor and HDI enhancer, the knocking efficiency of uh, anti c 19 car and the BCMA car can both increase from 20% to about 50%. The take home message is that um, T cell can be edited efficiently by non viral methods. High quality chemical synthesis single RNA can provide high coding efficiency and low off target rates. Better knocking efficiency. Cell viability and integrity can be achieved by using single strand DNA payloads as repair templates and optimize op electroporation protocols. And in the end, I would like to introduce um, GeneScript's CRISPR service supporting gene knocking, including the CRISPR sgRNA service and the single strand DNA service. For, for Single guide RNA at GeneScript, we offer a highly purified, safe added sgRNA. It has minimal impact on cell viability and minimal off targets from truncated oligos, and it's one stop shop from CRISPR machinery to knocking templates. Here's some data to show the high purity of or highly purified single guide RNA. It has a purity more than 99%, and there's no other uh, truncation fragments in the final products. Also, it has lower tox cell toxicity compared to IVT prepared single grain RNA due to the lack of triphosphate at the final period. And also because it higher stability due to the uh, modification at both final period and third period. And also it has very high editing efficiency and safety on primary T cell. As you can see here um, with both um, Cas9 and Cas9 fused with EGFP protein at different um, dosage from 7.5 picomol to 20 picomol, we can all reach um, better than 95% of the knockout efficiency and uh, high cell will be around 80%. Also, we also provide single strand DNA service for the HDR repairing templates. The single strand DNA we produce is done via what proprietary isothermal isomatic production process. And also is produced by our in-house prepared high quality control studying materials. The lens is available from 115 to 500 newton per time long. And now we are glad to announce that it's up to milligram level delivery quantity, allowing for flexible study design and even to support preclinical studies. The DS DNA final product, single strand DNA final product is uh, sequence verified, both of the uh, DNA producing template, also the final SS DNA product. And we also offer ultra pure grid for large scale single strand DNA. And it's animal free and toxin free. And we also offer free lifetime gene template storage supporting faster and more cost effective reorders. And in the end, I would like to say that we are the expert in gene synthesis with 18 years experience, and we can synthesize more difficult genes as uh, also more difficult single strand DNA designs. Also for larger, longer uh, designs and DNA payloads, we also offer milligram level linear stable DS DNA as knocking templates. In the end, I would like to say, let's work together to improve the efficiency and the safety together. And thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, I would like to um, 
I'm happy to answer. If you have any further questions, please visit our website. Thank you very much.